kind of a quiet group. It must be the cold weather that's uh, affecting everybody. But it's really a pleasure to welcome everybody here uh, for a discussion and to hear from Senator Baldwin on some Green Act uh, legislation. And uh, I just had a few remarks, but before I started, just wanted to uh, you know, introduce the Senator, who will get a chance to hear from. But also from her staff, uh, we have uh, Jean Brody, Doug Hill, and Jennifer Garner over there in the corner. Um, and you know, when you look at uh, Lakeshore Technical College, and it's really, we really appreciate having a discussion today on the Green Act legislation. Uh, when you look at LTC, we have a lot of great programs. Uh, we, we do a lot of great things, but one of the things that we're known for is our sustainability efforts and our efforts you know, in, uh, in alternative energy. A lot of that has to do with the fact when you drive by I-43, you see four uh, large wind turbines and a, and, a rescue, and a rescue tower. But our efforts in that area wouldn't be what they are today you know, without the partners that we have from our local business. And we're really happy that several of those partners are here today. Uh, first, uh, Lucio Fuentes. Uh, Lucio is also on the LTC board, but in his role as executive director and partners for community development, is very instrumental in weatherizing uh, low-income resident homes, you know, all over the Northeast Wisconsin. We also, and it's, this is the Snap-on uh, Wind Energy Lab, so we have two representatives from Snap-on here today, uh, Mark Behrens and Fred Frederick Brookhouse, and we appreciate their support because when you look around, you see Snap-on all over this room, and I know the center is going to have a chance to experience some of the Snap-on technology uh, later on today. We have Zach Wayman here from GE. Uh, GE hires a lot of our wind energy uh, technology graduates, and we appreciate your support. We also have uh, Kevin Crawford. Uh, Kevin, in his previous role uh, as a mayor of Manitowoc, was instrumental in alternative energy uh, growth in this area, and then with Orion, and now with Wasmer Technologies. And so when you look around our high bays, you'll see Orion lighting, you'll see one of the Orion light pipes. You know, here we try to implement their technologies all over campus. And he's joined today by uh, Sherry Fegwiger from Midwest Energy Efficiency Alliance. So welcome, Sherry. And finally, Jerry Heimerl. I hope you have a chance to try some of this cheese. But Jerry, back in 1983, had one of the first commercial wind turbines in the state of Wisconsin. And his family is very involved in sustainable, you know, sustainable agriculture. So welcome. When you look around our campus, we have a lot to offer. We, we have the only wind energy technology program in the state of Wisconsin. We have the longest running uh, nuclear technology program on a community college campus in the United States. We have our Green to Grow Go mobile lab, which we take around to different community events to expose people to different technologies. We, we annexed the environmental campus in 2011, which is the home of our horticulture and sustainable agriculture programs. We were the first to implement a sustainable, sustainability general education course. And so far since that's been implemented, have had over, in the last three years, have had over 360 students uh, go through that course. When, uh, I'm gonna turn it over in a minute, but when you look at uh, the Green Act legislation, it's really about jobs. It's about creating good careers for people. And it's about developing our middle class. And, when I was inspired recently by a, a remark uh, made by Nick Penchuk, and it's appropriate that I read that remark to you today because we're in the Snap-on uh, lab, and Nick is the CEO and president of Snap-on. And when Nick was talking about the importance of technical careers and the importance of technical education, he said, we need to transform technical careers from the consolation prize of our society to a national calling recognizing them for the essential role they must play in engaging our nation's primary economic strength. And that's our broad middle class. And the first step in the restoration is to make technical education a clear and primary priority for America's path forward. This Green Act legislation is actually one of those things that's gonna help set that priority for technical careers and setting a great path uh, for all of our residents to a great uh, middle class. So at that, it's really my pleasure to introduce Senator Tammy Baldwin. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Lanzer, for that 
introduction and really setting the tone for what we're gathering here and what it's all about. Uh, I was delighted to introduce a bill that's known as the Green Act last Thursday when I was out in Washington uh, into the U.S. Senate and uh, it's something that I hope we can get some real strong support for and movement on uh, when we return to session next week in this new year. Um, the, the acronym, the GREEN Act, stands for Grants for Renewable Energy Education for the Nation. And I think it uh, anticipates the fact that this is where a tremendous amount of our future growth will be and where some of our significant uh, recent growth in the economy has been. And uh, it, it is um, uh, visionary in some ways, but I also have to underscore some of the things that um, Dr. Lancer said about the leadership roles that are being uh, taken already throughout this state, both in the private sector as well as in uh, the, the technical college system and some of our area high schools and middle schools. Um, anticipating just what you described in terms of um, this being uh, such a promising path for so many of our, our young people and for our state's economy. Um, I also think about uh, green collar jobs in a very broad way. I think when we, when we hear the term renewable energy or clean energy, we think about uh, vehicle fuels and we think about generation of electricity. Um, but sustainability is now part of the conversation in a wide, wide array of industries and fields and, um, and must remain that way. And its um, opportunities for employment in the future is only going to grow. Part of the reason, again, for this legislation, recognizing that, is that, this, um, that green collar jobs are growing uh, at about twice the pace of others uh, in our country. Uh, 3.4 million people in America are employed in green collar jobs, which interestingly uh, outnumbers those who are uh, employed in fossil fuel fields. And that was a little bit of a surprise to me, especially given the significant growth in those fields in the United States in, in recent years. Uh, the jobs also pay more than the national average job, about 13% more. And in Wisconsin, it's about, uh, at this point in time, uh, 75,000 jobs, but we see a bright picture ahead in terms of that uh, changing and improving. The um, specific uh, focus of the legislation is to promote partnerships. Partnerships between the private sector and the public sector, but also partnerships between earlier education and higher education. So. Uh, the idea, and I've actually had these conversations with some of the employers who are in this room right now, of needing to get the message out uh, earlier in school that this is a wonderful and promising way to um, have your career in a community you call home, be able to support your family and give back to the community. And if that conversation doesn't start in middle school or high school, um, we've lost a lot of uh, opportunities, and so it must, and, and this legislation sort of uh, uh, incense that um, type of bridge building and partnership. Uh, when we can start some of this curriculum in the high schools, or at least make sure that there's an active dialogue between the instructors at the technical college and the instructors in the high schools, we have another step up and another uh, incentive for people to pursue green collar jobs. And so that's what part of this bill does, is give competitive grants to build those bridges, to build those curricula uh, across this country. And Wisconsin, I might add, is very well poised to compete because of the leadership that you've shown here as well as other uh, parts of our state. The other thing it does is to think about the facilities in which we teach. and can we think about um, uh, improvements in energy efficiency and, and energy uh, uh, creation that becomes a teachable moment? Now, you know, to see the Orion light pipe here in this lab, to see the um, wind generation happening right on campus, it, th this could not be a more perfect uh, location to tell that story of how becoming greener becoming more reliant on renewables becomes a teaching opportunity. 
And uh, so this is, uh, this is the focus of the legislation. I am um, excited to have introduced it. Uh, but I would also underscore that it goes back to what I think is the uh, epic challenge of our time, which is to get our economy fully back on track after a very deep and difficult recession, and to uh, make sure that we have uh, a pipeline of family supporting jobs. Uh, the middle class has taken a real hit in recent years, and we need to reverse that through working together, through our creativity, working across party lines, working with the public sector and private sector to get that job done. So I'm delighted to join you here today, and I'm very excited to hear your story about how you're already doing a lot of what this uh, bill um, would like to improve upon and grow. Uh, throughout the state and throughout the country. So thank you again for having me here and welcoming me here. Well, Senator, I don't know if you noticed uh, that toolbox there. Was, uh, that scene was quoted by one of our WIMP students. It says, I love my office. And uh, that, that was about 100 feet in the air. So I don't know, your office I know is on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, right now, uh, the center is going to get to hear from our students and, and begin a tour. And the first part of the tour is going to start right in this room. And to kick that off, I'm going to introduce uh, Matt Boer. Matt is our wind energy instructor, and Great. he's going to take you through some exercises. So, wonderful. Matt was saying how far people travel to come to learn about wind energy. I came from northern Minnesota. Oh, wow. International Falls. Okay, that's a truck. <laughs> yep. And we have some other students that are from like Illinois and other parts of the state, too. Okay. So there is a because big... this is an um, asset, that, a jewel that uh, it doesn't exist very many other places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like they said before, the wind program here is offered really well, and it's a two-year degree here, so it's actually better than other places where they have just... 16 week crash course. Yeah. This one you go really deep in depth. When, when you're out of school and employed, because that's 100% students are employed in the industry after you graduate. Them, yeah, right? yeah so mean, far we've had yeah. very, very good luck. That's I mean, what I've heard. A little bit of skill, a little bit of luck. So would that mean um, that you'd be traveling over a, a broad geographic uh, region yeah. in what you expect to do? Mm, so yeah, it really depends on like the company you get into, though, too. Yeah. Like, Jobs are in Texas, uh, California, Iowa, Illinois. They're all over. Where there's wind. Yeah, where there's wind, <laughs> exactly. So but you could go back home and still find a fair amount of Actually, no, there's no northern? wind up north up there. It's all trees. <laughs> okay, so it's more southern it's Minnesota, more southern. northern uh, Iowa. Yep, the actually, the Dakotas. Dakotas. yep, exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, North Dakota is your oil, and then yeah. South Dakota, you get wind. It's all over in the... Central Plains is where all the windows. Yeah. When you look at it. Well, so, great. So, hey, Joe. All right, can, uh, so we we'll introduce some of these. Hi. Ian Francisco. Uh, same thing. Second year, I'll be graduating in May, and I just come from Green Bay down here. Okay. That's yeah. so where we're heading not, next, actually. Not quite as far as Joe, but. Hi, I'm Aaron Castlan. I'm from Sheboygan, so only 10 minutes, and it's my second year as well. Great, yeah. great. Sage Horn. I'm from Burlington, Wisconsin, which is okay. probably three hours away from here, yeah. or something like that. Racine County? Yep, Racine County. Um, it's my second year. I should be scheduled to graduate in uh, December of next year, okay. actually, but had it spread out a little bit because some work and stuff as well. Very frequently you need to juggle those things. Has it worked well for you to work and juggle, and juggle school or for, is that For the challenge? most part, I mean, not much sleep. Coffee keeps me awake most of the time, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Good practice just going don't, to get in the Just field. don't yep. nap through the safety stuff. Right? Yeah, oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> so well, I have a couple of two rivers. Pleasure to meet you. Good to meet you. Um, got a Lotus program. It's awesome. Uh -huh. This is my second year. And I have it here in Wisconsin. It's fantastic. So yeah. I'm traveling all the time. There's a lot of travel. Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. So if we could uh, okay. kind of drift towards the back of the room here. Right. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about torquing. And uh, actually I'm going to do what I do best and pawn most of this good, off good on some you. of these other guys. Thank you. So it's not the, uh, at first blush, it's not the most exciting thing in the world. But uh, the fact it's is important. that it's very important. <laughs> you know, big things that get bolted together, it's very important. We're, we have a vested interest 
and these things staying together. Mm -hmm. So Sage, about what percentage of our maintenance and whatnot comes back to torquing things? Uh, 90% at least. Really? Yeah. As far as just making sure stuff is, you know, in order and everything, just to make sure stuff is breaking down and it can last its actual life. In terms of your annual maintenance, it boils down to it's about half of your time spent. So even though it's, it can be seem very mundane at first, it's very important. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So basically, what we'd like to do is to uh, give you the opportunity to torque uh, something here. <laughs> to teach me uh, whether it's too loose or too tight. Yes, yes. Uh, right. Sage, if you want to uh, yeah, you want start, to... <laughs> put on a pair of Show gloves, me. Sage, oh, okay. as well as the senator. Okay. Put it in the third transducer. And like that. it's one thing to just um, think that you're torquing something right, uh -huh. but this is actually a test bench that uh, Snap-on helped us out with. Uh -huh. And basically this will tell if if he's got it set right, even if he has it set right and he uses the, imp the improper technique, mm -hmm. um, he, it might still not be right. Okay. So this thing is kind of a check on his technique okay. as well. So let's see how he does. It's uh, F6, right? Or how do I it should, it should go. Okay. I kind of want to get a decent base. So, what are you doing here, Sage? You got to get a decent base, and then you pull until it clicks. Okay. And then as soon as it clicks, you let go. See, I was within, okay. yeah, I was within, you know, two pounds of it. Okay. Okay, want to set, want to clear it and uh, show her again? There you go. Or, okay, just here we go. Get a decent, get a halfway decent okay, base. Okay, so I, I don't have to remove it and no, replace, no, no. put it there? Um, okay, one so. hand on there, like one hand here, and then okay. a decent base with your feet, and then just kind of pull back. That way. Yep. Pull back until it clicks, and then as soon as it clicks, then. See? Within five See. pounds. Within 10 percent. Well, you, you got much closer than I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, with, uh, in partnership with Snap-on, we actually are, are part of something where uh, our students get uh, certified uh, by Snap-on in terms of being actually, uh, they've got a, something, a piece of paper that actually says, hey, I know how to torque something, uh -huh. Snap-on says so. And we run them through, if you look in this drawer here, when we've got, you know, 10 different, different types of torque wrenches right. for different things, some are electronic, some have dials, basically they learn how to use all this stuff and they get certification they can bring to an employer and say, you know, I'm not kidding, mm -hmm. someone else actually agrees that I know how to use this too. Yep. So that's kind of where, where we take it from, from here. Uh, Snap-on has been a real leader in working with community colleges and technical colleges and starting certifications and we're actually a member of NC3, the National Coalition of Certification Centers. There's 35 uh, colleges in the United States, you know, that are members, so our students going through, and this is just one of the certifications that they can yeah. receive. Yeah, I was going to say, I've been in a Snap-on supported technical college lab before uh, in Racine. Right, Gateway. Yeah, where um, folks much more in the automotive industry, but it really is a generous, you know, yeah. so partnership. It multiple disciplines, so yeah. what most people think of us as automotive company, the, right? The, 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 the white the truck. Origins, the, the white truck. Right? The, the price, yeah. But that's less than 50% of our business. We actually, the, the, this school here, demonstrating, you know, uh, what, how, to, how to train people in energy mm -hmm. appeals to us because we're also in that, yeah. that industry. So, that's right. You know, so whether it's aviation or wind or manufacturing, I know that's, we touch all of those. And many of those programs are, 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 are taught here at the, at the school. Exciting. Art? Yeah, Chris Royal. Chris, good to see you. Good to see you. Hi. Hi. I'm Justice Wicked. Good to see you, Justice. Hi. Hi, Janet. Good to see you. All right, so what do we have? Do you mind getting your hands a little dirty? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Roll up my sleeves, too. You want me on this side or that side? Let's put you on this side. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have Jess come up too. She's going to be a lovely assistant. Okay. Let me show you how we could get some seeds germinated from Maywood, which is an institution close here, Maywood Environmental Center. Mm -hmm. That's what it's called, anyways. These are Ritibida pineda prairie cone flower. We have some pictures up there off of the web to show you what they look like. One of the native indigenous prairie species, and we're going to do some sowing here. Okay. So, Jess. Ready. You get to put some mix into the pot there. I should point out that these are rice paper pots. Biodegradable. Rice pots. Yes, yeah. 
slowly biodegradable. They were donated from the Kohler Company. Uh -huh. This is a mix that has uh, worm castings, coconut fiber, compost bark, that kind of thing. A recycled bag. These yes, are very indeed. useful. I use yogurt know, containers for yes, all sorts indeed. of things. So we'll get some of that in there. We, we try to recycle, reuse as many things in the greenhouse mm -hmm. as we possibly can. And I guess we should point out this is all from our greenhouse across the road. Oh. It's nice this time of year. I was going to say it's what we all need to see. So, any secrets to this? Well, the next thing you'll get to do is smash up one of these seed heads. Let's get one started here. That can be a little hard. You just have to crush that up. Really just like completely yeah. obliterate mm -hmm. it? Mm hmm Okay. So what do you want to... Get another one. I'm going to come up like crazy in here, but hey, that's not bad. <laughs> you don't have to space them out, or you do one Yeah, you get to do that up. later. When the next stage happens and they start to germinate, you can take them out individually. That should work. I always push them around a little bit anyways. And then we have to cover them up a little bit. We'll let you do that. I mean, I want to <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Quarter inch or mm, Yeah, usually not just that. to cover them. Yeah, little seeds get a little bit of covering. Right. Just leave it off, press it down a little bit. label. Okay. Gotta have that. When you get it back, you can give it a little bit of water. Okay. And then you also want to make sure that you can take it back with yourself. Oh. Reuse box bag. <laughs> Reuse box. <sighs> and in a couple of years, this will be that. Wow. They are pretty easy to grow, actually, so we'll let you have that. <laughs> So which which of them is it? It's, well, the yellow. It's actually okay. one of those. It's Ritibida pineda. All the pictures are pineda. Colonifera is one of their relatives. Okay. But, uh, it's basically <laughs> prairie daisy, prairie sunflower. Yeah. yeah. And easy to grow. Gets about like so tall. Really? Mm -hmm. How exciting. Yeah. Okay. Gus now is going to show you okay. what we're doing over the environmental campus. Yeah. So All right. normally with environmental campus, we would walk over there. But, uh, the weather, so <laughs> we're going to do it on the board. Um, so a couple years ago, we bought a farmhouse, which is just across the street, diagonal, um, and we've been developing that as an environmental campus. Um, the, there are kind of two principles that we're uh, organizing the design around. One is to have a learning landscape, so opportunities for students to see plants that they'd be working with, um, and then to take advantage of the campus to uh, do hands-on work. Mm -hmm. hands -on the other uh, is to organize it around the idea of ecosystem resources. So in a um, typical land use situation, so something similar to like the orchard, which mm -hmm. you can kind of see yep. here, um, we would uh, manage that in a way that the one product was something economically viable, say apples. Anything else that happens there is kind of secondary to that use. So we're going to have some of that there, but with an apple, that's a tree. So there are other ecosystem resources that are provided by a tree, like uh, stormwater management. Mm -hmm. Rainwater falls on that. It doesn't end up in the sewer nearly as quickly because it's landing on the leaves and it's being soaked up by the roots. It's also because as the trunk grows, it's sequestering carbon. It helps um, combat uh, global climate change by right? sequestering carbon. And, um, and so we've designed the campus as much as possible to take advantage of those things. We have a permaculture food forest where we've got um, different layers of food plants, so everything from nut trees all the way down to uh, ground covers and roots that are, that are edible foods. It's also designed in a way that can be um, you know, beautiful environmentally and does things like sequester carbon and take advantage of the water cycle to uh, replenish clean water supplies. We've also got um, this uh, uh, arboretum area, which is going to include the ponds, which they're just working on now. Uh -huh. The ponds are designed to accept all the stormwater from uh, the greenhouse and the structures out there, as well as the parking and work area, which is gravel. Takes all the runoff from that, runs it into a bio soil here, cleans that water, and then that water moves then into the two ponds. So you said something was gravel, but not the whole parking lot, right? The, That's... So right now, this 
kind of parking area here is, is gravel. And that's okay. where we park and then also oh, okay. uh, work areas for doing projects and then tearing them down and building them up again. Okay. Student lab area. Uh -huh. um, and then we've also got this repair and restoration area. There's a creek that runs through the environmental campus which has elevated, elevated levels of phosphorus which leads to uh, Clodophora algae blooms along the lake, which is, we're close to. So we're experimenting with ways to reduce that phosphorus load. And that, basically that can be done through planting. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll be working with different plants there. And when we're doing the planting, something like willow can also sequester carbon and it can also create biomass, which could be used for fuel. So there are a number of different uses. We're trying to look at different ways that we can uh, create ecosystem resources on as many different levels as possible. And hopefully mm -hmm. that all works well in an educational setting, which is the idea of the campus. How to wear and how to take off the protective clothes if they work in the contaminated area. Okay. So this is our step off pad and the students try to practice correctly take them off and not contaminate the outside. Okay. okay. <laughs> this is a student bit. Now sometimes protective clothing is for keeping the things on us away from, you know, like for nanotechnology, keeping fibers, etc. And sometimes it's for keeping things that you're exposed to there from coming out here. Yes, and here we suppose Opposite. they have a radioactive contamination inside. Uh -huh. And the students, you know, work over there sure. and then they will, you know, wear this to protect themselves and protect all the others. Right. Yeah. Good job. Okay. <laughs> Who's next? Who's next? River? Okay. Okay, suppose you work over there and then you just want to step out and try to show how you correctly come out. Right now you did not take out your protect so you cannot step out. Okay? And uh, suppose this part is already intended, so you cannot step out. Okay? So keep going. Okay. Right. You took the balance. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> I know. One of the students, you are you are just a uh, rush out. Oh. <laughs> 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 Cannot keep that balance. Well, they would be working on what? In the limited area, like yes. what? What kind of a? Then, no, like you know, the, in the nuclear power plant, they have some radioactive I materials all there. You know. You should have bigger ones. The students that are here today are. Are you guys all local? Uh, no, I'm. I'm from Milwaukee. Okay. Okay. So or then we have. Then we have students from NWTC. No, not this class. Not in this class. But in the second, oh, okay. In the second year, so then we have okay. from our team, uh, NWTC. Okay. We okay. share this program with two other technical colleges, mm -hmm. with NWTC in Green Bay and with Blackhawk, okay. so that they don't have to recreate uh, the uh -huh. program. So they'll take their general education courses and some of the uh, supportive courses at their own school, and then Ning will either teach over ITV, which is mm -hmm. technology, or will actually go there and lecture from that location from time to time. Okay. And then those students have the ability to get the program without having that college have to recreate the program. Okay. And, and in your case, you come here? Yep. Drive an hour every day. Really? Yep. Every day but Mondays and Fridays, but last semester was That's every day. That's a commitment. Yep. So how, how far are you through your program? Uh, this is my second semester of the program. Okay. So I have summer classes to take and then next all next year.